This video is a production of Wheels by Fleming of San Jose, California, USA, home of hand-built basic and replacement alloy bicycle wheels. I'm your host, Robert Shackelford, aka Fleming, aka Mr. Rabbit. Today's video category is technical information. Today's topic is stress relieving bicycle wheels, a short primer for laymen and beginners. Hello, I am back after a five, six, or seven year hiatus from YouTube. This is Mr. Rabbit, aka Fleming of Wheels by Fleming in San Jose, California. And I'm here with you today, first time in person, to talk to you about stress relieving. What is stress relieving? For bicycle wheels and the spokes that we use to build them, stress relieving is taking that spoke, let's say at 100 kg of tension, inducing an additional roughly 50% tension, taking it closer to its yield point and to a higher level of stress, and then letting it go. Now allowing it to drop right back down to where it was before but in a more relaxed, stress-free state. That's stress relieving for a bicycle wheel. We're taking, we're inducing a roughly a 50% increase in spoke tension, taking it closer to its yield point to a higher level stress, and then letting it go, letting it come right back down to the lower tension in a more relaxed state, in a more stress-free state. Why we do this? Every grade of spoke has a theoretical life expectancy. Stress relieving is probably the most important thing you can do to make sure you come as close as possible to that life expectancy, theoretical life expectancy, under everyday normal cyclical use of that wheel. <clears throat> And this applies to all grades of spokes, high grade DT Swiss, mid grade, Wheelsmith CN, Pilar, entry level budget spokes, all benefit from stress relieving. You're trying to make sure you get as close as possible as you can to the life expectancy of those spokes at their different grades. Take DT Swiss for example. I have built wheels with DT Swiss 14 gauge straight gauge spokes on nice super heavy duty BP rims, fill with hubs, stress relieve them, send them out, come back 18, 20 years later, 100,000 plus miles and no broken spokes ever. Stress relieving will do more than anything else to make that possible. I've taken DT Swiss 15 gauge straight gauge spokes and used them over four sets of wheels, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 miles per wheel set stress relieve them each time. I own that wheel set, the fourth wheel set, still in use. I'm at 100,000 plus miles on these spokes. Stress relieving is what does more than anything else to make sure you get that kind of life expectancy out of your spokes under normal cyclical use. You do this for wheelsmith, CN, Pilar, stress relieve them. Send the wheel out, chances are pretty good you'll get three, four, or five years of everyday normal cyclical use at them for a spoke breaks. If you do not, you could see those CN, PLRs, and real spits most coming back in less than a year. If you do not stress relieve those DT Swiss spokes, you can see them coming back in only five, six, or seven years instead of 15, 18, 19, or 20. Budget spokes, real cheap spokes, if you stress relieve those as part of a wheel build, chances are you'll get more than a year out of those spokes. But if you do not, you send the wheel out without any stress relieving done, you can see those bunch of spokes coming back in and broken before three months has even gone by. Stress relieving is probably the best thing you can do in your wheel build to make sure you get as much as you can in terms of achieving that life expectancy of that spoken question that you used in the wheel build. I'm going to demonstrate two ways you can stress relieve. I'm also going to describe two others. 
I will also discuss two methods that people call stress relieving. They are not. So I'm going to show you two that are. Two that you can research that also are stress relieving. But I'm also going to describe two that are not stress relieving. So here we go. First method is the hand squeeze method. No tools required. You use your hands and a pair of leather gloves. <clears throat> Now, why do I have the leather gloves on? Because although this is the cheapest and easiest method, it's extremely painful. I'm used to it. I do 100 500 wheels a year wearing these gloves. I'll do four, five, six wheels in one day, take a break for a day, come back another day. Still painful, but I'm used to it. If you're a beginning wheel builder and you do this for the first time, you're going to be going, ow, because it really hurts. It really does. Make sure you have a pair of leather gloves on. Do not do this with bare hands because if you do, you're probably going to split some knuckles. And when that happens, it hurts like hell. It's very painful. So have gloves on. This method's pretty simple. I'm grabbing parallel spokes on one side, parallel spokes on the other side, four at a time. And I'm not just squeezing them. If you just squeeze them, you're not stress relieving. Remember, we're trying to get approximately a 50% increase in tension when we do this. So we're squeezing like a beast, super hard, for a full rotation of the wheel. This is a 36 hole wheel, nine times. So here I go, real hard. So that's the easy but painful hand squeeze method using gloves. <coughs> Excuse me. Here I have a 16 inch wheel. Can't get my hands in here. And even if I could, can't really squeeze. Spokes are too short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use handles of a plier. Notice I've taped them up trying to protect the uh, orange rubber finish on these things. And I'm going to work one side of the wheel at a time. I'm going to come in from one side, grab two parallel spokes. I'm going to squeeze with one hand, my right hand, and I'm going to pinch with my left hand to assist. Seven times on this side, seven times on this side, using a pair of pliers to handle them pliers. Squeezing super hard for full rotation on each side. And notice this method works really well for small wheels like 12 inch wheels, 16 inch wheels, 20 inch wheels. Usually for 24, 26, 27.5, 700C, 27 inch, I use the hand squeeze method with gloves. So there's that. There's two other methods that you can research online. Go to YouTube and search for stress relief, maybe motorcycle wheel. And you'll find a video of a motorcycle wheel factory that's stress relieving a motorcycle wheel. They have the wheel on a rig. It's being indexed a small amount each time. And they have hydraulic presses coming in and pressing spokes from each side. Turning the wheel, pressing spokes. Turning the wheel, pressing spokes. As long as they're achieving approximately 50% increase in tension and letting it go, that's stress relieving. You can find that on YouTube. If you go to SheldonBrown.com in their wheel building section, they have a small write-up on stress relief, and they include in that a method that uses a crank arm, a smooth crank arm, and they have a photo of it where they stick the crank arm in between a couple spokes and twist. That's another method you can research. I'm going to tell you of two methods that are not stress relieving. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you see a wheel builder using either of these two methods, 
or they say they use these two, you may want to walk away. Particularly on the first one I'm about to show you. If you see them doing this one, my advice is walk away. It's where they take a wheel and they brace it, the hub against a stool or table or even on the ground. So the hub is braced. And while the hub is braced, they press down on the opposite side of the rim. Rotate, press down, rotate, press down, rotate, press down. That is not stress relieving. No way are you inducing approximately a 50% increase in tension. That ain't happening. And the other problem is, is that if you press down just a little too hard, you're going to taco your wheel. You'll destroy your wheel. Understand that the weakest point of a bicycle wheel is lateral force on the rim. Bicycle wheel strength is linear. It's not lateral. Press down on the side of the wheel hard enough, you will talk with the wheel. It's not a smart thing to do. So again, if your wheel builder says it uses the press down method on the rim, or you see them do that, my advice is walk away. That's not stress relieving, and they're risking the destruction of your wheel. Another method you'll see online, YouTube, and on websites is one where they have an open table. So the rim is resting on the table. The hub is unsupported, and they bring a hydraulic press down, they press down and up. Now, here's the problem. If you see the hub only move like a couple millimeters or three millimeters, I'm going to tell you right now, they're not inducing a rough 50% increase in tension. They're not. You have to drive the tension up considerably and then release it. They might be spoke setting when they do that. They might be releasing a little bit of wind up when they do that. But I would question whether they really are achieving a high increase or a significant increase in tension before releasing it. Just ask them for a chart. What are they getting when they put a tension meter on the spoke while they're hydraulic pressing? Is it showing a 30 or 40 or 50 kg increase or not? Ask them. So, I'm going to tell you. A couple more things about stress relieving. Stress relieving has two other benefits during the wheel building process. First one first. Let's say you've trued the wheel, you've dished the wheel, you've tensioned the wheel, you have at 100 kgf. So far you're happy. And you do a stress relief cycle and you discover the wheel has come out of true or is a little bit off dish or the tension has dropped 5 or 10 kgf. What that stress relief cycle just told you is that your wheel's not done yet. <clears throat> you have more work to do. A bicycle wheel is not done until after a stress relief cycle it stays true, it stays dished, and it stays in the tension ballpark that you're aiming for. So stress relieving, stress relieving a wheel can reveal that you're not done with the wheel yet. You got more work to do. There's another benefit to stress relieving. Stress relieving a wheel will sometimes result in the wheel coming out of true in two or three spots Whereupon, when you true them back in and stress relieve again, you find yourself back at the same spots all over again. And you start scratching your head. Why am I truing the same spots all over again? And you true them again, you settle the wheel down, you stress relieve the wheel again, and discover you're right back at the same spots all over again. What is happening? Stress relieving is telling you that the rim is already at or very cl close to its yield point. In other words, you may be slightly over tensioned for that rim. How do you verify this? Pretty simple. Back off all the nipples about a half turn, do some fine truing, get it back to where it was before, 
at a slightly lower tension, settle it down, and then do another stress relief cycle. If after that stress relief cycle you discover you're not true in those same two or three spots over again, the case can be made that you have just fixed what was before an over tension state in your wheel. Stress relieving can reveal to you that your wheel is slightly over tension and simply by backing off the nipples a half term and settling the wheel down again and we'll, we'll verify whether or not that is the case. If the wheel suddenly settles down and stays there after a stress relief cycle then yes you have verified your slightly over tension and you just fixed the problem. That's the other benefit of stress relieving. So in review, to stress relieve a bicycle wheel you need to induce approximately a 50% increase in tension in the spokes. Bringing those spokes closer to their yield point to a higher level of stress and then let that tension go allowing the spokes to drop back down to its lower tension where it was before in a more relaxed more stress-free state. Doing this helps you get the max life out of the spokes that you use in the wheel as close as you possibly can to the theoretical life expectancy of the spoke in that wheel. That's why we do stress relieving. And that's all on the topic of stress relieving today. Thank you for watching. And Thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can visit my website at www.mrrabbit.net. Follow the link for Wheels by Fleming, and on the Wheels by Fleming main page, at the bottom is my email address. Use that to shoot me an email.